Welcome back, everybody, for some more Dawn of the Dukes. We finished Algirdas and Kestutis, the Lithuanian campaign, and that was fun and everything, but we are literally going to continue the story in the very next year with the Pole campaign. Wait, we play as the Poles and the Lithuanians? Oh, okay. Uh, but we have uh, uh, Jadwiga, Jadwiga? Uh, but yeah, 1383 to 1410, so literally just after uh, the Lithuanian campaign, and of course you're playing as the new Civs! Or at least one of them, at least part of the time, the Poles. So that's going to be, I think, really exciting. The matter of the crown. June the 15th, 1399. You can hear a distant bell tolling. Litters on the Vistula River. An industrious friar. Somewhere in the outskirts of Kraków, hailing the arrival of the new day, long before the priests in our own cathedral have risen from their beds. It has been a long time since I noticed such things, the little things of beauty, that season our days of war and toil and make them almost palatable. But as I lie here, Counting the days until the arrival of my first child. I notice them more and more. Perhaps they never went away. Perhaps being confided to this bed has simply opened my eyes to them again. Better is a hand full of quietness than two hands full of toil and a striving after wind. As I write or these something. words of the preacher, the mighty bells of Vavel Cathedral finally toll for the morning. Incredible, really, how the sound of those bells is wedded both to the worst and the most wonderful memories of my life. I came to this city when I was 11 years old. A lonely princess from Hungary, surrounded by guards, a stranger in a strange land. This kingdom of Poland which my late father had left as my inheritance, was a country on the brink of ruin. A civil war raged, with every duke and petty lord laying claim to the throne, and my hand in marriage as his queen. It was not a prospect I longed for, but, on the other hand, coming here meant that I would finally get to meet William again. My William, the Habsburg Prince of Austria. We had been promised to each other since before I could remember. Once I sat upon the throne of Poland, we would be wedded at last. As the mountains came to an end, and the bells of Wawel Cathedral sang from Kraków in the distance, it was him I thought of. <laughs> What I wouldn't give to be so young and naive again. Alrighty. So is that, that Jadwiga herself? I don't know. Oh, yep. And I guess that's exactly where our story is starting. Uh, bring Jadwiga to her coronation at Vavel Cathedral in Krakow. Uh, not the, let the rebel dukes capture slash kill <laughs> Jadwiga. You know, capture, kill, same thing. Okay, so castle and a pop limit of 120. Sometimes it is wise to run and fight another day, even if it means sacrificing some of your less valuable troop feels bad, man. Neither of the enemy dukes wants a fight to the death. If you subdue one, he will aid you in the fight against the other. Keep in mind that he will be a weaker ally for the rest of the war if you weaken him too much before he submits. There are several paths into each enemy base. The most direct approach may not always be the best. Scout the countryside, you may find locals who can assist your war effort. You cannot build on docks in this mission, so you must rely on farming uh, and fishing. And, uh, yeah, full works. I'll show you guys that. Once either Duke has joined your side, you can use the chat commands to cooperate with him. Okay, I'll probably check back on that later. Um... Jadwiga and her bodyguards are on their way from Hungary to Krakow, where uh, Jadwiga is crowned to be crowned king of, uh, queen of Poland. Uh, yeah, 
Southeast is Krakow, the Polish capital. Its nobles support uh, Jadwiga and are cool and stuff. Your strongest opponent is the Duke of Opel. He commands a large army from his walled city to the west. He will train stuff. And the Duke of Mazovia uh, has constructed a forward base in the north. He will have stuff. And throughout the countryside are various allied Polish villages and camps and stuff. And uh, the rumors of other factions, uh, the Teutonic Order. And a suitor is on the way to Krakow Green. Uh, I don't know who who's that. Oh, just literally the suitor. Oh, uh, is that like... I don't know. The roads are bound to be crawling with rebel soldiers. Let us hurry. We do not want the future queen to be late to her own coronation. That would be silly. So yeah, we are getting to play the new civs, and we're going to be in red color this campaign. I'm afraid that we cannot let you pass, your highness. The Duke of Mazovia thinks far too highly of you to allow the leaders of Krakow to use you as their partner. Um, is there a way around this? By the way, this campaign is actually designed by somebody who you might not know. It is going to be Bassy. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. Bassy didn't he design the last cam campaign? No, it's a different Bassy. It's Bassy with an E, Lord Bassy. And he's helped out with uh, several other campaigns in the past. Uh, when it comes to, like, I think their design and, like, their writing and stuff like that. Oh, no. Sorry. Thought there was a way we were supposed to avoid conflict. But alas, sometimes you have to reach out and punch face. But yeah, this is, uh, his first, like, full campaign that he's doing. So I'll be re really interested to see how it is, like, how his style, um, I guess differs from the other campaign designers. Are you doing anything, lady? I feel like, I don't know. Merchants, doing their merchant thing. Okay. Yeah, we were playing as the Poles. Oh, whoa. Wait, what? That's barricaded. That's not too friendly looking. Let's under... Oh, our bodyguard. It's a winged hussar. One of the uh, shared unique units for Poles and Lithuanians. We already saw... Uh, I already used them in the last campaign. Also, this is apparently a two-sword difficulty campaign, so it's a bit, supposed to be a little bit harder than uh, Algirdus and Kastutis. Anyway, the Poles are a cavalry civilization. I have a whole video where I go over both the Poles and the Bohemians. But uh, TLDR, Poles, they, they, they kind of do a little bit of everything. They are a cavalry civilization. Oh. Oh, feels bad, man. The princess's entourage cannot be far ahead. After them. Um, they're oh, oh, good gravy. Um, um, um. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks for buying me time, guys. Oh, hey. It's the uh, Polish Wonder, the Wawel Cathedral. Oh, thanks, monkey monks. Poles don't have halbs. This is a lie. I shall be with you shortly for your coronation. Cool. The Queen's new suitor will soon be here. It falls on us to rid the realm of all who would oppose this marriage. Wait, what? Okay. Okay. 
So. Um, okay. This all seems rather slimy and underhanded. Oh yeah, so Polish bonuses. Uh, you mine gold while mining stone. Like, you'll generate half as much gold when you mine stone, so we'll definitely do that. Uh, we have our full work as our unique building. Oh, these guys are like right here. Whatever. It's a very small map, actually. Whoa. I just realized. Now, I don't think I've ever played any Lord Bassey scenarios, but I'm pretty sure he did a lot of like the RPG stuff back in the day. Now, ever since the uh, <coughs> controversies uh, surrounding the Forgotten campaigns, there really haven't been too many RPG scenarios in AoE, like official AoE campaigns. I actually don't mind them, believe it or not, so long as they are done, you know, tastefully, and they're not, like, an entire campaign. But, like, for a first scenario, yeah, totally. I can get behind it. Okay, so you have to des defeat the Duke of Mazovia's soldiers and then destroy the castles of the Duke of Opal. Roskozania. Um, I guess let's just build a lumber camp right there. Oh yeah, yeah, what else do we have? We have the stone mining, the full work, and oh yeah, our villagers regenerate HP. It's a nice little bonus. Team bonus is that scouts do more damage to archers. We'll get to our unique techs when we get to them. They're both really good. And our unique unit is the Obu. We had a couple of them earlier, and they tear off the armor of uh, whatever they're attacking. Well, units. So with every swing they have of their huge freaking hammers, they will deal, or they will remove 1-1 one, one armor, you know, with a minimum of zero. Oh, whoops. And I have personally played a, a little bit of polls. Not too much, but still, I have played them. This is their unique building. It's called the Full Work. It replaces the mill. It gives you... It's a 125 wood, so it's 25 more wood. It gives you 5 pop space, so it's essentially like a house plus a mill. It's also 3x3. Three three. And when you build a farm adjacent to it... Uh, you'll get 10% of that farm's food right away. But it has to be, like, exactly next to it. Anyway, we really don't have that much to go with right now. But since we're restricted to the Castle Age, I imagine we will make a uh, very good use of Slakta Privileges. It's our Castle Age unique tech, and it makes our knights cost only 30 gold. Now, in Imperial Age, this is heavily tampered by the fact that Poles don't get plus 4 defense. But if we're only in Castle Age, that is not an issue. Go get him! Yeah, see, you can see the armor being decreased right there. And it's permanent, too. That yeah, kind of like Sicilians. This is a sieve that you want to get your farm upgrades before you start building any farms. Hold on. We can make perfect farms. 
Oh, I'm being arrowed. Okay, I have a stable. Make some knights. This guys only have feudal age upgrades. That's not too bad. But yeah, you see how I'm placing the farms like this? Do that yourself when you're playing poles. Place them exactly like this. Jabated. Yeah, this map is super tiny, man. Oh. Um. Hmm. It's like, oh man, how do you place your full work? You also can't like double up. You, you know, you can't you can't double dip into full work bonuses and stuff like that. However, the thing with poles is that they actually have a lot going on. Like, they have decent archers, they have decent infantry, but none of it's, like, amazing. I don't know, they're pretty interesting. <laughs> I keep on, like, wanting to instinctively place farms around town centers. But uh, I'm getting food instantly, man. Anyway, almost have enough stone for a castle. Get plus two defense. Also, it happens every single time you receive the farm. It's not like it's, you know, you can only ever get it once. Anyway, here's the Polish castle. You can see it right there. And I guess we'll just make some knights for the time being. Yeah, I mean, like, this is actually a very strong food bonus. You end up getting a lot of food. And your army isn't, like... You don't really have a great late game, but you have a very cheap army. Anyway, let's clean out this area. Yeah, Slakta privileges. Knights cost minus 60% gold. The Civ is like the anti Khmer. It's like you have to play SimCity with your farms. So many idols. Oh, there's more gold down that way. I doubt there's that much wood. I mean, the map's pretty small. But we'll also make some obooks for sure. Why not? Poke. Look at all of this full work farming Sim City. Alrighty, onward and upward. Yeah, look, these guys. 60 food, 30 gold. I mean, yeah, you do miss plus 4 defense in Imperial Age, but uh, when you're only restricted to Castle Age, you got full upgrades. Okay. 
I guess I'll just take fish from here. Sure, why not? The Duke had us building siege engines for him for free. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? like an honest customer. For a trifling sum, I am willing to sell you these trebuchets that we built for the Duke. Okay. And I have to actually tribute that. Okay, so that is going to be worth picking up uh, coinage. Because four trebuchets in a situation where I can't otherwise build them and I need to destroy two castles. That sounds very good. But yeah, the thing with the obu is that I'm not entirely sure the best way to use them yet. I mean, nobody is. I mean, the new sibs, right? But I feel like they combo really well with archers. Because archers... Archers have lower attack than melee units in general. Oh, hey, a relic. So, like, they, they disproportionately benefit. You know what I mean? Let's look at these guys. They're freaking badass. They have huge hammers. Do I have... Oh, our squire's already researched. Odd. Anyway, this is honestly not very difficult whatsoever. Plenty of resources over here. Go grab coinage. Yeah, the thing is, Obu don't really call, uh, don't really combo that well with cavalry because they're all taking up melee space, and cavalry already have lots of attack. But they're cheap, and they are a unique unit, and you know, I want to make them. Oh, we're being attacked from two sides at once. Now, the thing with the Obux is that, you know, defensively, they're also not bad. I mean, they train pretty fast. And if they're tearing off the armor on all these units, uh, the defensive buildings are going to do much better against them. Uh, I mean, that's going well enough, I suppose. actually kill those guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, this map is so... Like, this has to be, like, one of the smallest maps we've had in, a, in an official scenario in such a long time. Is this a tiny map? Like, a two-player map? I think it might be a three-player. I do not know faux show. Oh, I guess I guess all those guys met a rather untimely demise. Man, these uh these guys are so cheap. The knights. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, but the Obu stats are not that great. I mean, well, their their attack is low, but they have lots of armor and HP. But they're also slow. Okay, I guess we'll mine some more stone. Let's actually get the relic. Wild idea. Well, I guess we're kind of getting mopped up. But our knights are pretty darn cheap. Let's 
In my opinion, the biggest potential weakness for the sieves is going to be heavy cav. Like, if the poles are in a situation where they need to have some sort of unit efficiency or, like, cost efficiency against heavy cav, they're really going to struggle because they don't have camels, they don't have halberdiers, they don't really have any sort of other strong anti-cav options like, you know, Italians have Genoese crossbowmen. I guess Mongols don't really either, but, you know, they have Mangudai. And they have camels, what am I talking about? And camels are, are certainly used by Mongols in mid-game plenty. Alright, so pushing those guys back. But I want to buy the trebuchets. Let's build a castle over here. Oh, hey, another relic. I'll take it. Oh, yeah, kill these guys. But, you know, it's like your archers aren't bad. You have Arbalest, you have Bracer, Thumb Ring, but you miss plus four defense. Which is also kind of a bummer for your skirms. Get him, boys. Alrighty. Let's go get some trebs. Purple, purple. Pleasure doing business with you. Now you should also know about our return policy. Which is that we have no return policy. Oh my god, the writing. It's so... <laughs> it's like so much less serious. Like, that's not, it's not like a bad thing, it's just very, uh, I guess surprising. Considering, like, the very serious tone of, like, every other campaign. Like, yeah, maybe they'll have, like, a tongue-in-cheek moment or two, but, uh, in general, you know, it's pretty serious business. the heck is... Is there, like, a palisade gate here or something? Of course there is. Alrighty. Repair that. Let's get another full work. Need my perfect farm placement! You know what? I'm so specific about this that I'll delete that pavilion so I can have the farms. I knew where those traps. Okay, here they are. Oh, do these guys not count? Oh, yellow doesn't count. Alright, that's fine. This is straightforward enough. We'll just destroy that. Okay, we have our two relics. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's not leave these guys alone. Yeah, realistically, like, a multiplayer comp would be, like, Crossbowman, Arb, Obu, or Mass, Cavalry. I think those are going to be your go-tos. Whether that be your, like, Cheap Knights, uh, or your, uh, Wing Tussars. Is 
there are two players that have had zero score all game long, which I, I'm like a little concerned about. Just doing some scouting. Pulls have good defenses, by the way. Like, in terms of they have fortified balls, keeps, um, bombard towers, all that good stuff. I have so many random military units scattered around. Rusko Zanya. Where's the rest of Orange's soldiers? Maybe down this way? This is like in Purple's land. It's Purple land. Or not. I don't know. They did say not to destroy too much because then they're going to be your allies. Ooh, what's this? Anything fun? It's a full work. Hey there, dude. Enough. I will not see my city raised to the ground. Has my allegiance. Um, so does whoever the nobles of Krakow have chosen to be our spouse. <clears throat> that doesn't look suspicious in the slightest. Not remotely suspicious. Anyway, there is another relic somewhere. Ah, yes, here it is. Where did the monk go? Well, I'll just make another one. Uh, I guess here he is, whatever. So I guess it is yellow. Oh wait, Orange resigned. How long has Orange been resigned? Am I just dumb? Don't answer that. Please don't answer that. Uh, I mean, that's a big army. A pagan king. But we're supposed to marry a Habsburg. They are from Austria. Where the hell are you guys going? Bombard cannons. I mean, that's a pretty big army. The Obuks are definitely going to help against the Teutonic units, though. Uh, I mean, I'm getting kind of cleaned up. Oh, hey, it's the Crusader Knight guys. Those are cool. Oh, no, no, not the traps, not the traps. Please, not the traps. Need more food. I need more stone. Well, we're kind of thinning their numbers. Uh, 
Nikogo. Sprawdzam się, sprawdzam się. Jakieś rozkazanie. 40 soldiers left. Also, I wonder what's over here. I wonder if it's just empty space. Oh, thanks, Duke of Opal. Um, oh yeah, there's gold over here. Sure. You're fighting with a villager. What the hell, dude? I have so much wood. Okay, the numbers are dropping. Go, go, go! Almost there! Is this mysterious suitor? And why is he in Lithuanians? And why is he in green, the same color from the last campaign? None of this adds up. Seven, six, there we go. Much longer. Poland will have no fighting men left to defend it. For the sake of our kingdom, I will heal. I shall accept the man that Krakow wants as king. It will not fight for a duke who bows to a pagan king. Come, my brothers, let us return to Prussia. The Teutons are pulling back. Yeah. And both of the dukes have surrendered to us. The realm is at peace. But what is this? What is this, guys? Oh, I, I got totally jebated. Two more weeks until we reach Krakow. Then I shall finally lay eyes on my bride. I got jebated so hard. Inside the castle gates. When I heard the news, it was as though a pulse of sunlight came from my heart. And I ran to meet him, only to see him surrounded by my own guards. I threw myself at the gate, but the guards pulled me away. And William disappeared in a crowd of uniforms and glittering steel. The Archbishop, his otherwise kind eyes, gray and hard, spoke almost in a whisper. As if the words stung his throat. Your marriage to Prince William has been annulled, my queen. We have found a more suitable king for Poland. His name is Jogaila, Duke of Lithuania. I felt my heart shatter. The noblemen of Kraków had never intended to honor my vows to William, as they didn't want Poland to fall under Habsburg influence. And so, they had made a secret deal with Yogaila of Lithuania. A deal they now expected me to fulfill. For a long time, I insisted that I would marry my William. But after many days and nights, in tears and in prayer, 
I could see no other way out than to break that vow. I would trade my own happiness for the happiness of the Polish people. I would marry Yogaila, the pagan duke, and do my duty as queen. God forgive me. Well, isn't this off to a <laughs> joyous start? Yeah, I mean, this is already really interesting. Like, it's it's just very different, right, than than what we're used to. I, I was so debated by this. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if this was, like, an intentional thing to throw people off. Like, oh, someone's going to spawn in from over here. I mean, I did think this area was pretty suspicious. I think I highlighted it, like, once or twice. But, oh, my goodness. Freaking debated. All right, guys, that was the matter of the crown. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Star of the Poles.